Hello, my friends. Today is a very good day. We are going to be talking about a past leading American automotive manufacturer. A car maker that dominated NASCAR in the 1950s, but also a car maker that is no longer around. And we're going to be talking about where it went. Today, we are going to talk all about the Hudson Motor Car Company. So, let's do it. familiar with this channel I'll drop a history video once a week either a automotive manufacturer history or an motorsport or auto icon you name it if that's your cup of tea hit subscribe and if it's not that's fine too we need to go all the way back to the beginning we're gonna start with the birth of the Hudson Motor Car Company in 1909 eight leading Detroit businessmen got together and decided they were gonna create an automobile company of those eight men, it's very clear that Joseph L. Hudson, entrepreneur of department stores, invested the most because he was the one whose name ended up on the cars. And it was their main goal to create a car that they could sell for less than $1,000. $1,000 at the turn of the century, whatever the math is for $20, $22. Of those eight, there was also a car guy giving the lead and the direction for the manufacturing of the automobile. And that was Roy D. Chapin, a gentleman who in the past had worked with Ransom E. Olds of Oldsmobile. And the Hudson Motor Company was quick to action. They were founded in February and come July, they were rolling off their first car, the Hudson 20. Plus, they were ahead of the times. The Hudson 20 was one of the first low priced cars on the American market. Just a reminder, pretty much at this time, only the wealthy had these horseless carriages. So the thought of producing an automobile that was more available to the masses was kind of groundbreaking and key to success. And to note, it was this formula that finally led Henry Ford to success. Hudson 20 was a hit. It sold 4,500 in the first year, which made it the best first year's production for automobiles at that time. And it was those sales numbers that made Hudson the 17th car maker in the world. And with that success, they needed a bigger factory and Hudson grew. In 1919, just 10 years after its founding, Hudson created a brand called Essex. This brand was to focus primarily on budget-minded consumers. That brand was to compete directly with the titans of the industry of the day, Ford and Chevrolet that competition proved a little too stiff and by 1932 they would do away with the SX brand but introduce the Terraplane brand. And the Terraplane brand frankly didn't really last that much longer either. It lasted a total of six years. I mainly bring it up because they used Amelia Earhart as promotions for the brand and obviously she's kind of fascinating. Really I could do a whole radio show and a video on the cars that she drove and her mysterious and adventurous life, but I digress. In its early glory, Hudson had many innovations and firsts. To name a few, dual brakes, warning lights on the dashboard for your generator and your oil pressure, also a balanced crankshaft. And it was that balanced crankshaft that allowed the Hudson Super 6 to work at a higher rotational speed while still staying smooth. This created more power for its size than lower speed engines. The Super 6 was a straight six engine and it was the first engine that Hudson had ever built. You see, the prior engines they had designed but had produced by Continental Motor Company. Something to note is that a majority of Hudson's would be powered by the straight six till 1957. That would also be a little bit to their detriment. Not to say those were bad engines, but more of a note that Americans were obsessed with V8s, and we're gonna talk more about that a little bit later in the timeline. At its peak, and before the Great Depression, Hudson would be producing 300,000 cars. Those numbers would make Hudson the third largest automaker in the US, following Ford and Chevrolet. Something I think is important is that Hudson was one of the first car makers to include women into design. In 1939, they hired Elizabeth Ann Thatcher. She is considered one of the first female American designers. Her main contributions were on the 1941 Hudson, 
bringing exterior trim lighting and also working on the instrument panel. Side note, she actually ended up leaving, marrying Joe Oros, who was one of the head designers on the Mustang. Now we hit World War II, which pretty much stopped everything in its tracks. The US government prohibited any car makers from making cars from 1942 to 1945. Naturally, Hudson ceased making cars and contributed solely to the war effort. During the war, they produced aircraft parts, auto parts, anti-aircraft guns, and naval engines, of which included the Hudson Invader naval engine, which powered many of the landing craft that carried our soldiers on D-Day. And post-World War II, Hudson was in full production mode, cranking out some of the newest, biggest, and best handling cars of its day. So this is, gets a little bit juicy and I had to include it. In 1944, Fisher Body Company tried to take Hudson over. Who is Fisher Body Company? Well, they were one of the famous early coach builders out of Detroit. The Fisher brothers contacted the main stockholder of Hudson Motor Car Company, which was Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands. And the queen was like, let's do this. But unfortunately, word got out before the deal could be sealed and Hudson stocks skyrocketed. You see, everybody else thought it was a good idea too for Fisher to take over. It's said that the deal didn't go through because the Fisher brothers' tender offer was no longer able to match the sudden increase in Hudson's stock. So the deal didn't go through. Actually, we need to talk about the Hudson Hornet. Produced from 1951 to 1954 and featuring the functional step-down design, which essentially was just a step-down floor plan that allowed a lower center of gravity than contemporary vehicles. Naturally, you can imagine that did very well in racing. This lower look was also heightened by streamlined design, often referred to as pontoon styling. From 1951 to 1954, all Hornets were powered by the high compression straight six, with the option of the twin H power dual car. In 1951, the Hudson was the fastest production car of the time. When no other car maker was involved in stock car racing, Hudson saw an opportunity and took it. The Hornet absolutely dominated races in the 1950s. Naturally, at this point, it is time we talk about the fabulous Hudson Hornets. A famously successful NASCAR campaign of Hudson Hornets driven by several drivers. And just a few to name, Herb Thomas, Marshall Teague, and Tim Flock. One of the oldest car marketing ploys, and as the adage goes, is win on Sunday, sell on Monday. And it was because of that that Hudson directly backed their teams and provided them whatever they needed to make their cars go faster. It was actually Marshall Teague to use the first term, fabulous Hudson Hornet. And in his year, he took 27 wins out of the 34 major stock car races. In 1953, it was Herb Thomas that dominated the NASCAR series and his fabulous Hudson Hornet, taking 15 wins and the championship. But even with those wins, unfortunately, the market was just too tough a competition for a smaller automaker. And consumers, frankly, were chasing after V8s. They thought, why would I pay the same money for a straight six when I can get a V8? And Hudson would eventually put out a V8, but not soon enough. This is a little quick digression, but that's exactly what happened. Zora Arcus Duntoff, the grandfather of the Corvette, wanted to have a mid-engine Corvette a long time ago, but they couldn't fit a V8 in that position. And Chevy, at no point, was gonna put anything less than a V8 in the Corvette, because Americans were obsessed with a V8. And in 1954, Hudson would merge with Nash Kelvinator to form American Motor Corporation. And three short years later, the Hudson name would be retired forever replaced by the Rambler. It kind of hurts to think that a car that could do so well in NASCAR and at one point be what, the third largest car maker in the States behind Ford and Chevy, to now be completely gone. But I guess that's the name of the game, isn't it? So what did you think about the Hudson Motor Car Company's history? I do try to keep these around 10 minutes so I leave some facts out. What do you think was a cool fact I left out that should have been in?
is a good topic I should cover for next week. All right, guys, it is officially beer 30 for me. I'm going to go drink something at our mechanic shop. Boop, boop, boop. If this is your jam like it is mine, press subscribe, press like, and if it's not, that's fine too. But have a great day. Bye.